Becoming the Channel explores the transformational power of wealth consciousness and offers a pathway to spiritual growth, business development, and leadership, especially for way showers, thought leaders, and messengers. I'm Dr. Robin McKay, your host. I'm an award-winning psychologist and author, advisor to CEOs, leaders, and spiritual entrepreneurs. And I've been a clear intuitive channel since I was a little kid. Through conversations with leading experts, thought leaders, and everyday people who have found success in their respective endeavors, Becoming the Channel offers us a platform where we can explore what it takes to connect with, receive, hold, and transmit wealth consciousness for prosperity on all levels. This is the first step in a journey of many, and I am so excited to share it all with you. Be sure to follow us on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts to stay up to date on new episodes and special content. And now, on with the show. This week's guest on the podcast is none other than my dear friend, Christina Rice. She's an intuitive channel, best-selling author, and the founder of A High 70 Energy Healing. She and I have also been on each other's podcasts before. You may have heard me on her podcast, Christina the Channel, or you might have listened to us talk about the link between intuition and ADHD on my old podcast, Mindset Rx. We'll be sure to link both of those episodes in the show notes so you can enjoy those as well. And by the way, Christina and I are also co-authors on a new book we have out, Akashic Wisdom on Ascension. It's channeled messages from the Akashic Records to help you navigate your ascension journey. That is available on Amazon and we'll pop that link in the comments as well so that you can get either your Kindle version of it or we also have that available in paperback. So we hope that you enjoy all of those resources. Listen, this episode is really special because we do get into what it takes to actually channel high frequencies of consciousness, like wealth consciousness, in addition to doing the channeling that Christina does and that I do of non-physical benevolent beings from other realms and dimensions. Not everybody is cut out for channeling benevolent non-physical beings. And so don't let that deter you from listening to that. I think it's a really fascinating behind the scenes look at two very high level channels having this conversation. It's kind of like if you could be listening to our conversation over lunch or something like that, I think that that would be the kind of thing that we would talk about in that circumstance. So I hope that you enjoy this episode and let's get on with the show. Christina Rice, welcome to Becoming the Channel. Thank you for having me. Very uh, fitting. I know. The channel. Christina, the the channel. Christina, the channel. Is on becoming the channel. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. Me too. You were on my other podcast. We talked all about ADHD and intuition, and I think we hit on channeling too. So now we get to take the gloves off and just talk about channeling. My favorite, my favorite topic. Before we dive in, congratulations on courts.co. Thank launched. you. Thank Yay. you. Yay. I'm so excited. It was like, oh man, so much has gone into all those products and it's just really rewarding for it to finally be available for everybody. So I'm really relieved and excited. So thank you. You know what I'm most excited about? And for our listeners, we'll put the link in the show notes so that they mm-hmm. can see all the beautiful products. The uh, 777 angel Um, t-shirt sweatshirts. Yeah. I know. I love them. (laughs) Uh, I'm, I'm excited because I have been wearing like the sweatshirts and, uh, the necklaces for a long time now. Like I've, cause we had, you know, I got samples really early and like just different samples Mm -hmm. and stuff. And so I've been wearing them for like a really long time. And people ask me when I'm out and about, like, especially out here in San Diego, right? Like everybody's like, where'd you get that? And I'm like, Oh my God. Like, so I'm excited uh, to actually be able to send people to the website now. (laughs) I need to order mine ASAP because I'll be in San Diego and I hear it's a little chilly out there still, a little brisk. It is. It's been, it's gloomy. It's been very gloomy. Yeah. Yeah. Yay. I'll be placing my order soon. Thank you. (laughs) So we, just to give some context, you and I have had conversations over, let's say even the last year around channeling, what it means to be a channel. You have been a channel for a long, long time at this point, intuitive from the time you're a little kid. And I always like to start with that. Like, 
Can you talk a little bit about when you were a kid, how did you know you were different? What was the channeling experience like when you were small first? Let's start there and then we'll, we'll bring it forward. How did I know I was different? <laughs> I mean, every, everything told me I was different, including people would reflect to me that I was different. I always felt off. I always, I always felt like this might sound really messed up and I never expressed this because I felt like guilty about feeling this way, but I always felt like I was just way more aware than everyone around me, even adults around me. I just felt like I'm way more aware of what you're even talking about or what's going on. And they would talk down to me like I was a kid. And I was like, I think I understand this a little more than you. Uh, and I just knew things before other people did. I saw things that other people weren't, you know, I think about a lot of times when I would see I would see beings and things on the playground and I would say things to my friends and I would get made fun of, you know? So I just, I mean, I always knew I was different. Everything was pointing to, I was different and I, I could just feel that. And also because, you know, I didn't realize that I could, I could essentially read other people's thoughts and that I could feel their emotions in my body. So I was getting a lot of that input all the time. And when I would express things I was experiencing, seeing, hearing, going through, I would get those looks like, what are you talking about? Um, you know, and I, so I just knew, and even just a lot of the like problems I had, like I had a lot of issues with sleeping. I was afraid to go to sleep, you know, and I was really afraid to go in certain situations. And, you know, from the way my parents responded, I knew like I was, you know, it was not normal compared to other kids. So I had a lot of that feedback, but how did the channeling look like, how did that look when I was a child? I guess I'll expand that out and just not just channeling, but with my intuitive gifts, I, I was always able to see beings around me. So it wasn't just in my mind's eye, my third eye was seeing the holograms all around me. And from a very young age, I mean, every single night I would crawl out of my crib and I would go into my little corner and all my guides would come around the, the ETs, the different ascended masters, and I, they would talk to me, we would hang out, I'd learn things. Uh, I didn't realize I was getting different activations, different codes. There was a lot of sacred geometry work. They would show me how to move energy, th things like that. I also saw a lot of scary stuff as a kid, you know, um, when I would pretty much every night when I went to sleep, I was having past life memories come up. So I had a lot of phobias as a child because really every single night I, I would have dreams uh, that felt very real where I was being burned at the stake, where I was drowning in Atlantis and I didn't know what was going on at the time, you know? And so I would get really scared and I would tell my parents, like, I think, I think we need to buy a submarine. I think that we're all going to go down, you know, and no one listened to me. Um, I was like, I need a, I need a fire ladder in my room. Like I was really concerned these things were going to happen to me. And I also had a lot of really intense astral traveling experiences as a kid. And I saw a lot of really scary stuff for sure. Most days I had a mirror as my closet, you know, those big closet mirrors. And I would stand in front of that mirror and it was like the mirror would transform into some other world or vision. So I could see through the mirror, this other portal essentially. Um, and oftentimes that portal would, sometimes it would turn into like another world that looked very like avatar-esque, like that kind of thing. But it would also often turn into, I was looking out at a crowd and there was just thousands and thousands of people in front of me. And all of a sudden I would just start giving a speech and I would be walking back and forth in front of my mirror, giving the speech. And I would be saying words I didn't know because I was really young and I would be thinking, wow, I don't even know what I'm saying, but it's really smart, you know, and I would basically just be channeling these, these speeches. And so I would do that all the time um, as a kid. And that was like the, the way that the channel channel was really coming through as a kid. I would do that every single day and they would kind of you know, move through me in that way. You know, I think other, other little ways of channeling came up. Like somebody would, my grandparents thought I was so smart because they would read me a book once and they thought I had memorized it once. And then I would just repeat it back. Uh, and I wasn't memorizing it. I was just channeling. I was channeling it, you know? So things like that would happen a lot. Um, so those are some different examples of how it showed up when I was little. I love that. And I'm so grateful you've shared all of those experiences because even for me, I'm reflecting on my own childhood and relating to some of your stories. I think this is one of the greatest gifts that we can give to our listeners today is to give some perspective and make sense of probably some of their childhood experiences as well. I'm thinking about like one time I had a deja vu moment 
in a movie theater with one of my friends, my friend, Carrie Butler, we're sitting there watching this stupid comedy. And I leaned over and I said, I dreamed this. And she looked at me like I had three heads yeah. and that was a simple example, but it was one of those moments where you, you feel so different. Mm -hmm. And I know your personality pretty well. So I'm curious about your response for me. I wanted to fit in and I wanted to, I just wanted to be like everybody else. Like that was a heartfelt condition of mine. Mm -hmm. I just want to be like everybody else. I remember having that wish at some point, was that your experience or did you just go with it? I did not want to be like everybody else, but I wanted people to listen to me because I was, it, it wasn't that I wanted to be different because, or to be the same as them, right? <laughs> because I loved all the experiences I was having and the cool things I was seeing. And like my daily life felt like I was talking to the elementals and the fairies and leprechauns. And like, it was fun. It was like everything I, I like to immerse myself in the dream world was my life. And I, and I was having these really fun conversations with, I love, I loved it. It was like my own little world. Uh, and I never really wanted to be like other people, but I did want people to listen to me because I knew I was right about things and I knew I wasn't crazy. And also because I didn't know how to necessarily understand everything I was seeing or knowing or experiencing. And I was looking for help. I was scared about a lot of things. I was worried things are going to happen. I wanted to protect myself and the people around me. And I also wanted to help myself, you know, and I think for me, it mirrored a lot of my health issues later on in life. And just like this, like trying to get people to hear me and feeling like they're not hearing me. And one of the things that was really hard for me as a kid. It was the sleep problems and the the nightmares I was having, right. was a big one. But the other one was I had this I really struggled with time and space where I would have these episodes, I would call them basically where the entire, I would describe it as the entire world slowed down. So I was moving through life and everything around me was in slow motion. Like one of those movies where the person's in some time warp and they're seeing everything in slow motion. And that would happen to me all the time as a kid. And I would still be, I would tell my mom, I'm like, I'm still really fast, but you guys are all really, really slow. Like they're going like this. And I would experience it like that. And I would feel completely insane and out of control, or I would have space expand a lot. So I might be laying in my bed and all of a sudden I see my bed expand out you know, 50 feet in every direction. And I'm looking at the floor and the floor doesn't look solid and it's moving. I'm seeing it move as waves. And so I would have these things happen a lot with time and space where I was seeing it all warp. So I was really afraid to like get off my bed or move my body. And I would see my body change and transform. And that would happen to me like in different situations where I was, I was in scared and I didn't know what to do. And I felt really helpless as a child when I'm like, oh my gosh, the ground over there is not solid. I could fall into it. And I'm trying to tell my parents, but they're moving in slow motion and they can't even hear me because they're, I can get out 500 sentences in this time that they can say one. It was this really, really bizarre experience of time and space. And that scared the shit out of me. <laughs> Did you ever think that you were going crazy? No, like I didn't okay. think I never thought that wasn't the thought that I ever had. I thought like the other people would think I'm crazy. The thought was like, why are other people not hearing me? Like, I was just really frustrated with it. I knew what I was experiencing was real. I was experiencing it, but other people weren't getting it. And I was like, oh my gosh. And I was like, am I the only person on the planet with this experience? Like, I just thought I was the only person. I felt so alone. And I think that was really the feeling that was hard, hardest for me. Most of my life was just feeling really alone and really misunderstood. And it turned into this theme of like, in my life of just people aren't going to get me and I'm not even going to bother trying to explain it to them because I'm just having a completely different experience. So no, I never thought I was crazy. I just, you know, I think it closed me off for a long time mm. to a lot of people because I hadn't met anyone who could understand it. When did you finally meet somebody who could understand it? I finally met somebody who could understand those types of things. I was probably 23 you know, and it was the first time I saw a psychic, you know, and that was really what led me into this whole world. And then I started getting trained as an energy healer. And then I started meeting people who could understand and the things I was talking about, the things they were seeing. I was like, wait, I see that too. So it was really just my first segue into that spiritual space where I finally met people who could understand it. What led you to the psychic? My health issues. There you um, go. Yeah. My health issues led me to the psychic and my health issues were also my, like the path to just outside of those spiritual experiences in general, feeling understood for the first time, because 
it was another experience of, you know, everybody around me telling me I was crazy or I was making things up or there's nothing like it, I just didn't feel heard. And I felt like nobody could help me, me searching for answers and finding other communities. I suddenly found all these other people in the world who had the same experience as me and who could understand it. And that led me to a few things. I found a lot of friends who had similar interests to me. I changed my life path and I became an entrepreneur and I started to meet different people who were, could actually really see me. And up until that point, I had never, I kind of just always thought that all of my friends, like there would be no friendship or relationship where I would feel fully seen. Like I didn't know that was possible. And so it was me really just like following my actual interests and alignment where I started to meet people who were like me and I could actually have deep conversations and I felt seen for the first time and through my health issues, through my path as an entrepreneur until eventually my health issues still led me to the the psychic. And then I met people who could see me in that capacity as well. I'm just reflecting because there's so much I know about your path and along the lines of your, the health issues and the things that you went through up until you were 23. Can you just backtrack for a second for those of us who don't know that part of your story. When did health issues start and kind of how did they manifest? They manifested in all different types of ways. I mean, earlier on, it was mental health issues. It was anxiety. It was depression. It moved that, that really led into a binge eating disorder. So it was like kind of that vein of things, but that was also overlapping with when I was about 17, I got a case of chronic mono lasted about two years. And that really took a toll on my body and activated a lot of things. After that, my health just kind of got worse and worse. And I was having, I had like a lot of gut issues. I had extreme weight loss. Um, My organs started shutting down. I was a mystery case for a long time and finally got to the root of it. And it was just the, the whole gamut of a lot of different gut infections. I had parasites. I had SIBO. I had candida. I had heavy metals toxicity. I had hypothyroidism. I had mold illness. I then found out I had Lyme disease. Um, It was just kind of like the whole gamut of things that took a very long time to really get to the root of. And yeah, so it manifested, you know, in every way possible. And, and a lot of that, I think, you know, there was physiological things going on, but it was leading me to my spiritual gifts. It was leading me to energy healing. And it was also a lot of emotions and energy and downloads that were stuck in my system. Like I was feeling so much and experiencing so much. And I, it was just clogged. Like I was Mm -hmm. energetically constipated. Right. And that meant my entire body couldn't detox. My entire body was just holding everything and it was manifesting physically, you know? So when I finally started to learn how to move the energy in my body. When I started to finally like use the downloads I was getting and like, like actually bring that through. And then my body was starting to move things too. Um, so my body was for sure, you know, as always mirroring what was going, like going on for me, just energetically and psychically. I wrote recently and it's actually for my certification program and becoming the channel and the McKay actualization method. I, I wrote about how our consciousness works with the physical body, like they're in partnership. And one of the things I think that blocks people from channeling, not just other beings and other consciousness, but literally new frequencies, whether it's joy or abundance or prosperity or whatever it is, wealth consciousness is the, the blocks that show up in the body. It's like the hose gets kinked. Mm -hmm. So I want to pitch that over to you and see what your take is on that perspective of the relationship between the body and the consciousness and how that plays out. Oh, 100%. I mean, I personally believe that optimizing, clearing, detoxing your physical vessel is like crucial to being a clear channel, 100% crucial. And I, you know, it's funny because I've had this conversation with a lot of other psychics, intuitives, channels I know, and people who disagree with that. And when I really get into it and I'm looking at, and they're, but they're also talking about how they can't, they're, they're really struggling physiologically with their work. They're really, they're really struggling to download new things. And I'm like, this is because your body can't receive it, you know? And so what I know very clearly is the more I focus on lymphatic drainage, the more I focused on detoxing and I'm getting all of that stuff moving out, moving through my channel just gets clearer and clearer and clearer. I know that for me, my nutrition, my lifestyle, like taking care of my body in different ways. These are levers I pull depending on what I'm doing with work, you know? So it's like, if I'm going to, if I'm going to channel a book, 
the way that I eat and what I'm doing leading up to that, like how I'm taking care of, care of my body, getting lymphatic drainage treatments, going to the chiropractor, getting a colonic, things like that. Like I'm clearing everything out so that I can fully bring in all of the information that wants to be brought in. So I personally think it is super helpful to be looking at the physical body. And also like for me, the nutrition piece is, is huge. Like there's a reason why so many people who get into the health space, then find their way into spirituality because it detoxes the body, decalcifies the pineal gland. It opens them up to spirit. Like it's just clear your, your senses, you're not, you're not dulled anymore, right? Your senses are more open. And so you can actually finally tune into your psychic senses as well. So yeah, I think that it is really, really important. It's so important. I started weight training again, intensely earlier this year. Mm -hmm. I've always lifted and worked out with my trainer, but I told him, I said, I want to do, I want to create my bodybuilder body and not so I can do fitness shows or anything like that. But because for me, there's something about the frequency of my muscle Mm -hmm. and my frame, my structure that I know is going to make a difference going forward in my own capacity to channel. Mm -hmm. I think most people will say that like they'll do the opposite. I think that they'll focus only solely on the mind and the consciousness and not so much on the physical body. There's that kind of the, the mind body split. And I think what you're talking about and what I'm talking about is the integration right between consciousness, between spirit and the physical. Oh, it's, I mean, it's the most important thing. I mean, that's quite literally like when I am channeling another being, my vessel has to be clear. So that frequency can anchor into my body right. And transmit through my body. And when I, as I've moved through this process, you know, it was really hard for me at first to understand why it mattered. Why does it, what's the difference between if I'm just talking to you and then I relay the message versus if you're coming into my vessel and speaking through me. And there is a difference because when that vibration gets anchored into a physical vessel, it hits completely differently. And that's how we can actually ground in the codes and ground in the activation. So it's a very, it's a very different experience. It's not, you know, better than or worse than, but that is what we are being called to at this time on the planet. It, it, we can't just keep doing this, like separating the physical and the spiritual thinking about it and then living one way right in our lives. And then we're meditating and I'm all high vibe up here. It's like, we we're creating a different earth. We're creating a different experience. We have to bring the templates in now. And that's the huge thing that everybody is missing. I swear, like everyone I'm talking to, I'm like, it's so separate. You, how are you bringing this into your life? Right? Like, how are you actually living this out? Uh, I think this is also the value of things like ritual and ceremony that have been so lost. That is how we bring the practice like into the physical. It's not enough for me just to meditate on it. It's like, okay, I'm going to maybe create an altar. I'm going to have some type of ritual to assist with this transition, something to actually bring it in. And that's why a lot of people will do a lot of work in the astral, uh, in the quantum, whatever, and they're not seeing it in the physical. What have you done in the physical to pull it down? You've got to bridge that gap. Well, it's the integration. It's full Mm -hmm. integration of consciousness and body. And one of the, so here's, here's something that just occurred to me. We talk about full embodiment of our own consciousness, of our own soul consciousness into the physical body. If our own consciousness isn't fully embodied, fully inside of the body, it leaves room to your point when you're talking about when you're a little kid and you're seeing all the weird, creepy shit that's running around in the etheric as well, or in the 40, I guess, as well. Um, it also gives those, those entities an opportunity to glom on mm-hmm. when there's space in the body mm-hmm. and you're not curating the body. That's when you can run into trouble with the, with the entities, I think. Oh, hundred percent. And that's why it's like all the things that take us, I mean, alcohol, right? Like <laughs> classic, like, oh, of course shit's going to get in right? Like, of course it's going to get in, um, all kinds of different substances. I mean, it's a whole other thing, but we've got to like, and I think, you know, for a long time, I really struggled when I was just living fully from, from my mind. And I really was, and it was easier to stay up here. And especially when you have health issues, you learn, I learned to cope by being outside my body. Cause I didn't want to be fully in here. Cause it was very uncomfortable. I had a lot of pain. Right. And it was when I finally like learned to anchor in and work with it, that things could actually clear out and, and move through. And I could like actually receive everything that wanted to come through. That's so good. The word integration, 
keeps showing up for, for my clients too. They're always talking about, well, how do I bring this into my physical reality? Mm -hmm. You have said that energy work is the new mindset work. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I do. I do think that. (laughs) (laughs) And I have said that doing energy work as is as important as washing your hands or brushing your teeth these Mm -hmm. days. It's like, it's not something that we can bypass anymore. And it certainly isn't something that we can just do on the side for fun. Like it's a parlor trick. And I think that's the difference pre 2020. I think that we could still get away with, you know, sort of doing things on the side and going to our weekend retreats and, you know, meditating on a special occasion. But now it's like the, the gloves have come off and it's time to get into and integrate. Oh yeah. I've had a lot of, uh, tough conversations with people recently where I'm like, look, you can't use this. This is not energy work is not like going to the ER. It's not urgent care. Yes. Right. Thank you. This is your, this is your lifestyle. And I'm really sick of you coming in. We do all this great work and then you go out and you go back to your regular life. And then you come back in and we're doing this same thing again and again. And I'm like, I'm not here. I'm it's a waste of my time. Like, I'm not going to repeat essentially the same things again and again. And then you think that you can just you know, go off and do your thing. And then Christina will just fix it energetically. I'm not available for it, you know? And I think a lot of people think of energy work that way. And it, to your point, it is like brushing your, your teeth. You know, it's part of my daily energetic maintenance. I'm just not, it's not urgent care. That's how I feel about it. I'm so glad that you say this. You know, a lot of my clients who I adore are physicians mm-hmm. who are highly intuitive. They know this stuff, but, and I've, I've given them a pass for a while just because the intensity of their work on the kind of on the front lines of everything that's Mm -hmm. been going on in the system for a while now. And now we've reached a point where it's really time to take energetic responsibility. I mean, it's look, it's like anything with your health. There's a lot of things that I do that other people don't because they think that it's an unnecessary expense. And I'm like, well, you're going to pay the price for it though. Later on, like all these things to me, it's, it's not a luxury. It's part of preventative wellness. And so we need to do the same thing with our energetic wellness because that leads into literally everything else. Like you look at the energetic root of any, how, how do you, people wake up and they're like, how did I get cancer? right? It's like, I don't know. How did you get cancer? What have you been doing the last 50 years, right? What personal care products are you using, but also what emotions have you stored in your body that you're not looking at, right? We, we got to get ahead of it because otherwise you wake up and you have a health issue. You feel like shit, your life blows up and you're like, how did I get here? And it's too late, you know? So to me, it's like, I'm not going to wait until I get a cavity. I'm going to brush my teeth. Right. And to your point, like, we just really can't, we, we just really can't get away with not doing it anymore. Like, like, guess what? You're an energetic being like you, you got to deal with it. You got to take a shower. You got a physical body, like just do it. And it doesn't take that. It doesn't have to take that long, you know? And it's like the easiest way to shift your entire life. And that's the thing about like, you know, when I say energy work is the new mindset work, I'm like this, the mindset work thing. I'm like, this is just feels so <laughs> what a waste of my time. Like what a waste of my time. Like, why would I not just get in there and clear out the energy? And that's going to literally just naturally shift my mindset. It's the same thing as like subconscious work is, is amazing to me. Energy work is like another angle of subconscious work. Like we can do subconscious work, right? Subconscious rewiring through the energetic realm, but we can go even like, there's a different angle beyond subconscious too, because I can get into your stomach and pull out the energy that's stuck there. Right. So that's really what we've got to be looking at. Like the subconscious work, the energy work, what's hanging out on your body, because there can be a lot of stuff in your field that maybe hasn't manifested yet, but why would we not clear it, shift it, activate things earlier on so that it doesn't have to manifest physically. So that it doesn't have to manifest physically. And that's the whole point. Yeah. It's like, here's, we've gotten this backwards. We're really good. Culturally. We're really good at manifesting physical symptoms. Yeah. I just broke my toe, my baby pinky toe on my left foot. I came out of my office. Cooper's baby gate was down and I just skimmed my toe and I thought I stubbed Mm. it until I looked down and it was like (laughs) black. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, it's still like, I feel I have that synesthesia where you look at somebody else's body and you can feel it in your own body. Well, for me, I looked down, it was like that toe was on somebody else's body and I'm like, what is even happening? So it's easy for me to, it would be 
if I were operating in that old paradigm, easy for me to, you know, how did this happen? Why did this happen? Why is this happening to me? And I looked down at that after I called my sisters who are both physicians and just had them confirm that in fact it is broken and did buddy tape it. And that's about all we can do from a physical perspective. And also they gave me quite a bit of empathy around that too, which was sweet of them. And I know that they were also laughing because they know how, when I hurt my toes, it's like the end of the world. (laughs) Uh, Like I'm very dramatic about it. (laughs) And I was also like, okay, so how is this working for me? And I didn't go too far. I can make meaning out of anything as I know you can. So, but I didn't go too far into what did I do to manifest this so much Mm -hmm. as I was just like, okay, well, this is where we're at now. And I know two things. One is that it was a timeline jump. My ordinary life ended the the moment my toe hit the the Mm. gate. And now I'm curious about what's next. That's a very different energy than why is this happening to me? And let's go to the ER and get, you know, an x-ray and cast it and all those things. I'm not saying that people shouldn't do that if it makes sense, but in Mm -hmm. this case, it doesn't make sense for me to do that. Oh, yeah. So, So we manifest things physically in our bodies, but we don't always manifest what we say that we desire to manifest. Like yeah, more money, more wealth, yeah. more prosperity, more whatever mm-hmm. of the things. Mm-hmm. But we're really good at manifesting shit things to happen in our lives. I think unconsciously. Does that I make th- sense? I think that I think that's true. I I don't know that I always. It's like you can see it as manifesting. Like I think about my different health issues and things that have happened. I'm like I can see how I manifested it, but I also can see how it wasn't necessarily a manifestation. It was rather just my body communicating with me. You know. So it's like um I was having really bad, like the last like two years, I was having like horrible skin issues where my skin would just, I would wake up one day and it would just be like a cut on my face Mm -hmm. and I would just be like bloody and it wouldn't heal. And I kept having this all over like my face. It was super weird. And it was happening because I was trying, my guides were like, get off video. They were like, you need to not be on video. You need to be hermiting. You need to be writing books. And I kept trying to do my daily stuff. And I was like getting busy with video and what's the one thing that would make me not want to be on video if I have like random cuts all over my face um, that didn't heal? Like they wouldn't heal for like three or four weeks, like sometimes even longer. And it forced me to hermit. And so I don't like, I think about like, that wasn't really something I manifested. It was more of like my body was saying, you're not in alignment. And so we're going to have this thing to force you to be in alignment. Kind of similar to how, you know, this happens with, I feel like everyone I know where they're going too quickly, they're doing too much. And then they break their ankle or they're, they, something happens with their knee, like because they're being pushed to slow down and to chill out, you know? Um, And in some ways, yeah, it's like they manifest that because they've been secretly wanting, like, I just want to slow down. I just want like a break. I just want the same way, you know, I'll be like, oh, I don't want to go to that thing this week, that this weekend, I really don't want to go, but I'm going to go. And then what do you know? I wake up and I have a, I have a fever. Right. And I'm like, yeah, I definitely just manifest that. But I also think it can be like, it's a little different energy for me than Mm -hmm. the manifestation of like, my body's just kind of getting me back in alignment because it's like, I had the, I had this contract with my body. Like I came into this vessel and we're working together. And my vessel is always trying to keep me in alignment as well, which is why it's, it's telling me when it's sick or when it's not happy, that's information for me where it's like, you're not in alignment. Right. And, and how does the body communicate symptoms the same way? Like I speak English to, to say something it's language is different quote symptoms, you know? So I have to ask myself like, okay, what is it trying to, trying to tell me? And it really is about, alignment in, in many ways, you know, but I think that, um, us manifesting shitty things and especially with our, with our bodies has a lot more to do with, it's easier for us to make changes when we're forced to, and the body is how, you know, our higher selves force, force us to essentially, because when it's like, oh, I literally can't go, I literally can't stand up. I literally can't, whatever it is, because there's a physical problem. That's when we finally surrender. Right. But our brains can be our minds can be very powerful when you're like stubborn or type A, you're like, I'm going to push past this. I'm going to push past this discomfort and, uh, you know, keep, keep going, or I have to do this. I'm obligated to this. And a lot of times when we're manifesting amazing things in our lives, like we have to have the bravery to choose differently, but a lot of people don't choose differently unless they're physically forced to, you know, it's such a good differentiation. And it reminds me of, you know, the old Louise Hay model of you can heal your life. And Mm -hmm. if if this, then that means that you're thinking X or Y. And that really is that old, I think it's an outdated paradigm at this point, to your point about the manifestation, Mm -hmm. I manifested this 
ailment in my body. And I really loved what you said about the communication piece of it. The body's communicating with mm-hmm. and to us. And then on the other hand, when it is a, a wish fulfillment, we'll call it like, I wish I could slow down or I wish I, my wish was I, I want to sit down and write. Well, guess what I've been doing? You know, well, it just, it's yeah. a different, it's a different perspective on it than the old kind of gaslighting yourself about what you manifested and why you manifested it. When yeah. It's like and it can be, it can be part of the positive manifestation, you know? And so it's like, mm-hmm. when we're manifesting something, we don't always, you know, in our minds understand all the pieces that have to come into play for us to get that thing. And that's why it often looks like everything, everything's falling apart. It's like, that's just how you're perceiving it, but everything's changing and rearranging so that you can get what you want. Right. And sometimes I know for me, like when I'm manifesting, uh, when I'm manifesting a lot of things, my body has to receive the activations. And so I'll get a lot of extreme fatigue or aches or pains or things that keep me in bed so that I will lay in bed all day. So I can just receive all of the downloads. And they're like, this is literally like, you will have to receive these activations because you've been manifesting this thing. And this is the process of getting there. Right. And so I think a lot of people don't always see that it's, it can be part of the positive manifestation coming to fruition. Things have to change. Things have to change. And I think that the gift in this piece of our conversation is really just helping people develop an awareness of what's possible with the physical body and the relationships that our consciousness has with the physical body as well. Oh, body yeah. has its own consciousness. Why aren't we communicating? Why don't we have a friendly relationship with our bodies? I mean, I know that you do and I do, but I think that's one of the last frontiers for, for those of us who are in this work is cultivating that friendly, loving, communicative relationship with the body. Yeah. Well, and to do that, you have to stop thinking that you can control it. Like your co-pilots you're in it together. And it, it's, I mean, it's like a, any type of partnership, a business partnership, a marriage, a rom- whatever. It's like, okay, this is a partnership. I can't will this person to do what I want. We ha- we have to, we're collaborating here. We have to be in conversation, right? And a lot of people get frustrated with their bodies and angry with their bodies because they're treating their bodies like it's something they can just control. Like I tell you what to do and you just do it. It can be a conversation. You could be like, body, I'd love for you to do this. And it's like, okay, cool. If this is in alignment for me too, this is, you know, works for both of us, it will work out. But if your body is like, this environment's not working for me, you can't just will it, force it to do what you want because you're co-piloting together. And under- understanding that for me was really when everything shifted. Like I, I got to treat this like a, my marriage partner, my business partner, not like, I don't know, something I can just control like a robot. I'm just deciding what you're going to do when. Or a slave. Yeah, that's it. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. But in fact, that's a lot of times, I think how we've been trained to treat our bodies, like they are property, they are slaves, they are servants. Mm -hmm. And I've said for a long time, the body will do what you ask it to do for as long as it can. But at some point there's a breaking point and the body Mm -hmm. is going to do something different based on what it requires. Yeah, totally. Well, it's like our bodies are trying to support us, right? And our bodies are trying to be healthy. But like, if our end goal is out of alignment with our body staying healthy and actually supporting us in our mission and feeling good, then the body's going to say no thanks. And then you're in trouble. Yeah. Or not. Then it's an opportunity. 100%. So what are you channeling? What are you channeling recently? What's the word on the street and Christina, um, the channel land. What am I channeling? I have a new book coming out. I don't know when this is releasing, but I have a new book coming out July 11th, which I'm really excited about. Um, it's a scribed text from Melchizedek, uh, who I have been working with since I was a youngin. Uh, he was the first guide that I ever experience in like physical, physical form, like where he wasn't just a hologram, like I could touch him. Yeah. I just have had a long-term relationship with Melchizedek psychically. Uh, and so, you know, my other books up until this point, like I've all channeled from an entity I work with called the Monarch Being. Um, and so I'll, some of these other energies, entities that I work with are wanting me to describe other texts as well. So I'm excited to kind of like expand out and do some different things. Um, so that book is going to be coming out July 11th, which I'm really excited about. 
Uh, it's all about ascension and really about truth activation. So it's a really, really powerful text. And then I will have a few months later, the next book from the Monarch Being releasing as well. I spent a lot of last year channeling a lot of books. I have a lot of things written. Um, and this year is more about actually releasing. So that's what I've been, you know, writing, channeling, other channeling stuff. I mean, I'm really having fun playing with all of these different entities, ascended masters that I, I can channel and like bringing them in to answer different questions and like really letting the personality shine through and helping people see like these entities, they all have their own different opinions and perspectives, uh, which I think is important. So like, I think a lot of people still give their power away to their guides and like your guides, it, it's not like a higher than better than it's a different perspective. Right. Um, and so I really like I don't know, just having this great conversation like on different social platforms, podcast, YouTube membership, where we're just bringing in the guides and like asking them questions and seeing what they have to say and even asking different guides about the same topic and seeing how it comes through a little bit differently. Um, so I'm really loving that and just kind of like getting more into for me, like the that style of channeling, the trans trans esque, I guess, direct voice channeling, however you want to call it is a lot of fun, but I also am like bringing in a lot more of the, like channeling the elementals and uh, like you can channel anything. Right. And like, I'm doing a lot more like the mermaids, the fairies, like all that fun stuff that like I like to do personally. And so I'm having fun actually just like bring, bring that into my work more. Um, so yeah, we're kind of going over all different types of topics, but I think the big themes recently have been a lot about, it's all about like how we're actually anchoring the new templates onto the earth plane and like, what is that actually looking like in our lives, you know, and the guides will consistently redirect the conversation into like, well, how are you applying this? What is this actually looking like in your relationships? Like, because a lot of people in the spirituality space like to just stay in the idea land, idea land channeling, but it's like, how is this helpful? And what are we doing about it? Right. And so I find that, and, and even with just different questions I could ask, like the guides are always redirecting and they're like, what are you creating and how are you doing it? What actions are you taking? Let's talk about your relationships. Let's talk about your relationship with your body. How's your romantic life, right? What are your friendships? Like, are you still hanging out with people who can't see you, right? What are you doing mission wise? Are you just thinking about it and dreaming about it? Or when are you going to actually get to work? Like it's a lot right now of like, make life changes and get moving and what's the action you're going to take um, in all different realms, you know, because I think this last year has been a lot of realizations for people. You know, it's been a lot of like bringing truths to light and like actually getting ready to like, okay, I'm stepping into my next level and I'm living it. It's not this far off thing. It's not the thing that, like it's going to happen in the future. It's the future is happening right now, right? I'm living my mission right now. So I got to get to it. So what does that actually look like? And we've seen so many changing relationships. So many contracts have ended and now we're in this really cool space of creation, you know? Um, and it's really like, we're being redirected hardcore to get in alignment with mission and understand ourselves as energetic beings. You know, I think I'm always checking in on like, what's the updated mission? Like, what do you really want me to be sharing or talking about? And like right now, a lot of it is explaining to people, sharing with people how the energetic realm works. And what it's looking like in their everyday life and how all the stuff that they think is far off out there in the astral, in fantasy land, in fantasy movies, this is happening now. And this is affecting you. Your other incarnations, your other realities that you're in are affecting you, right? Um, Like your karmic contract, this is affecting you. (laughs) So for people to really see that a lot of this stuff that they think isn't affecting them, like, oh, it's happening and you're an energetic being. So how do I, how do I work with that? That's a lot of what's wanting to come through for me personally right now. That's so good. I have a question for you. You are one of the clearest channels that I know. Thank you. And you're welcome. And I only say things that are true as you know. (laughs) Yeah. It means a lot to me. It, It really does mean a lot to me. Yeah. And here's the thing is that there are a bunch of people listening to us, thinking that they would like to channel, thinking that, I don't know how I want to ask this question. There's, there's a question of discernment Mm -hmm. because you said yourself, you can channel all kinds of things. And if somebody's not clear in Mm -hmm. their awareness, if somebody's not clear in their body, they can still choose to channel things. It just isn't going to be the highest and purest light. So can you speak to us about that? The discernment piece Mm -hmm. and 
we've had this question behind closed doors and I'm going to bring it forward. Can anybody be a channel? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> the question of the century. <laughs> okay. There we go. I'm going to give you the stage. Take it right. away. Sister. She's, she's going to put it on me. She's going to be like, here, you No, you I have, it. I have my opinion too. And I want to have a conversation about it, but it is yeah. so important because I have a very clear, even about intuition as well. And you know what, how I feel about that. So, yeah. And I think that, yeah, I don't know. We might have slightly different opinions, but I think we're more, we're probably mostly aligned. Okay. Early on in my experience working, when I started getting into like the spiritual realm, cause I was not into it and I started like seeing different healers and psychics. And I was really into just seeing different intuitives all the time. Um, and I was like, this is so interesting. And I started to just notice different things about, you know, accuracy levels, right? And a lot of it comes down to, and first of all, sometimes it's like I could tell, and I, at the time I didn't fully realize how I could tell, but I can tell when people are channeling or intuiting, I can see exactly like the mechanism, how it's coming in, like the actual technique. I can see exactly where it's coming from. I can see the vibration and I can see like, is the breakdown in what they're connecting with or is in their interpretation? Because sometimes people will get the correct, they're tapping into the right vibration, but they're interpreting it incorrectly. Right. And so these are things that I can see, I can tell about how somebody is channeling. And what people need to understand is that like channeling is an art. There is a skill to it. There is a technique to it. And there's a lot that goes into it. Being a clear channel has required me to up until this point and continuing on forever, consistently be checking my blind spots and doing a very, very deep level of personal development work, shadow work, like diving into my shit. Like, I don't think people understand how much I dive into my shit. This is all day, every day. I am working on myself and getting right into my ego all the time. Right. Um, it's part of why my personality is so brutally honest, because I have to be this way with myself. I have to be able to tell, right. So I have to get in there for myself and do a lot of that, that personal work. Like that's the most important thing. Um, getting into my subconscious, what are my biases? What are my pers- like, like, where am I blocked as a channel where I'm not completely clear and, and open? Where is my opinion too set? Right. That's not going to work. But then it's also the technique with like, you have to be extremely specific with what you're tapping into. A lot of you are just like, what wants to move through me? What, what the hell are you channeling? Where is it coming from? What's the exact vibration? Have you checked it from every freaking angle? Right. And, and part of this is connected to, I talk about this a lot with like the quality of your questions will affect the quality of the information you're receiving. And a lot of people aren't asking the correct questions. Right. So it's a difference between, okay, I'm, I'm going to move soon. Right. And so let's say I'm asking, do I need to move? Right. And that, that's the question, which I could get a no, right? No, I don't need to move. But if I ask, is it for my highest and best to move? I would get a yes. Right. And that's just a very simple example that people do all the time when they are channeling, when they're talking to different entities, uh, when they're, uh, doing intuitive work, channeling for other people where their questions are just a degree off and it completely shifts the quality of the information. You know, it also has to do with your physical body right? Uh, how you're taking care of yourself, the things you're surrounding yourself with, the music that you're listening to, the people you're hanging out with, like, this is a lifestyle choice. Like if I am around low frequency people, low frequency environments, listening to certain music, like that is all going to affect what I'm attracting into my field, right? That is all going to affect my channel. And a lot of people, I mean, I'll say, I guess you could view it as aren't disciplined enough. You know, I don't really see it as discipline because I know how good it feels. Like I like to feel good, but for a lot of people uh, who aren't clear when I'm looking at when people aren't channeling from um, a very pure place, because I I see that what's going on is a lot of like, they haven't worked through their shit. They're still in their ego, in their life. I'm looking at their friends I'm looking at their relationships. I'm like, well, no wonder this is what's coming through. Right. So there's, and that's just like the tip of the iceberg. Obviously this is a whole conversation and I'm going to be totally honest. Like, I mean, I have a psychic development course. I will not at this point, maybe my mind will change, but I will not train people in channeling the way I channel ever. I will train people in their intuitive gifts and in energy work, but in trance channeling, I will not train people in, um, because I feel that most people want to do it for the wrong reasons. And your intention for wanting to do it has everything to do with what you're going to attract in. And I think that people also don't understand like you're, you're opening yourself up to something coming into your body. So you better be really freaking responsible with it. Um, you trans channels have died before because 
the frequency is so intense. Like you have to, you have to treat your body like you're a professional athlete. You can quite literally like burn a fuse. Like, I don't think people understand the level of what's going on to have that frequency radiating through you. You have to be responsible with it. Uh, and you also are going to face some really deep, intense, dark stuff. Like you've got to be able to look at any entity and have no fear that you can clear anything. And have no fear that you're like, you have to know that you're in complete control. Like you have to be a master at the energetic realm. And that is a long path to walk, right? So that's kind of my rant on, you know, being a channel. And I don't want to like discourage people from communicating with the divine, not at all. But like, it's like, I don't know if I have a child and they're going to go to a concert by themselves, I'm not going to send them out without an awareness about all the sketchy shit that can happen. Like you need to be aware of what you're doing to stay safe, right? Like you don't take you know, something from a stranger, you don't let somebody drive you home in your car. Like you've got to know all of those things, you know? And I remember one of my first mentors, she said, she would say, you know, if you, if you get a new power tool, you better be trained in how to handle it properly. Right. And it's not that the power tool is wrong, but maybe not everybody's meant to be using a chainsaw, right? Like it's that kind of thing. And the other thing is I really think that in the spiritual space, there's a lot of, it's a spiritual ego thing. It's the Ooh, star stars in my, like, I want to do it that way. Cause so-and-so does it that way. But why, why we're still living in this better than less than thing. And there's, there's not a better than less than thing. It's just a different way of channeling. And what we're being guided to do is really lean into like how source wants to move through us and what's our unique mission. And at the end of the day, guess what? It's not everybody's mission to channel the way I channel, right? The same way, like it's not my mission. Could I make an entire career on being a, a psychic medium working with dead people? And it would probably be really entertaining. I, I could, but that's not my mission. It's not what I'm here to do. Right. Um, and so I think we have got to get back to like, why do I want to do this? What, what's the intention? Am I doing it properly? And understanding that it's a sacred experience and practice. It is the most sacred experience, you know, for me. And not everybody is built for it. It's like, I mean, we've talked about this before, but it's like, you know, I could, I could learn to paint, you know, I could learn to be, but I'm never going to be, I don't know, Georgia O'Keeffe, you know, like I, that's just like not who I'm, I'm meant to be. So why am I trying to force it? I think that, you know, I think we all have psychic abilities. I think how those show up are different for different people. I know that this might not make everybody happy, but I have psychic abilities and I have energetic abilities that other people just straight up won't ever have. Like look, look at other civilizations, right? Where everybody's psychic abilities were on. There were still oracles. There were still like healers, right? So even when people's gifts were fully on, just as the norm, there were still people in society who had special gifts uh, in a different way that you can't be trained in. It's just natural for you. And for me, there's a lot of things that, you know, people, well, I, I feel this energy of like, well, how do you do that? I'm like, I can't tell you how I do it. It's just a natural thing. Like, I'm not going to I don't know, Ariana Grande and being like, how do you hold that? No, she's like, I don't, it's just my lungs. Like, it's just how I do it. (laughs) Right. So I think that there's a lot of, and it's in the spirituality space. It's all over. It's like trying, trying to be someone else. What are you uniquely gifted at? What's easy for you? Like, where do you find flow and lean into that? There's so much. And (laughs) it's so good. Okay. Did I do it? (laughs) I'm going to give you an A plus for that sister. <laughs> Thanks. My, my inner child, my inner child know, needed that. <laughs> we need the gold star. No, I was just thinking about how you, Esther Hicks, I think is a great example of this. She came out, they came out with their first book when I was coming online with my abilities. And I remember watching her saying, I can do that. I also remember watching John. Do you remember John Edward, the, the guy who talks to the dead people? Mm-hmm. That was a lot. That was like, early 2000s, he was out there doing that. And I was like, I can do that. I know I can do that. And I think that there's a point in your spiritual development where you're looking at leaders who are doing things that are similar to what you have the capability of doing. That's fine. We see that in every field. And it's especially easier to do that when you see somebody who's like you in some way, who looks like you, who's from your area, whatever. If they can do it, I can do it too. But then we tip into emulating or even copying people. And I think that it starts out largely innocently. Mm -hmm. In other words, we look at somebody who's fully embodied, like Christina Rice is fully embodied in her gifts. And our heart's desire is to be fully embodied, not in Christina's gifts, because we know that that's not possible. 
unconsciously, usually. Consciously, we think if I just do it like Christina, then I will have the success or I will have the influence or I will have the following or whatever it is that this other person does if I do it the way she does it. And that's not the case at all. That's the big, that's the smoke and mirrors, I'll call it. But what happens when you tap into the frequency or the consciousness of it and express it through your own unique gifts and abilities? What does that look like? It probably looks very different for me than it does for you. Yeah. And we know it does. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's also this process of like, there's a lot of skills and things that we can all do. That doesn't mean we're going to make like, or that our life mission is that, for example, like I have a lot of skills, like I'm really freaking good at, and I could be a, you know, billionaire doing it. Like I look at things like, I'm like in another life, I would for sure be a social manager, a social media manager. I'm so freaking good at social media. I'm so good. Or I I could be a copywriter. Like I I could be just a straight author, like easily. Like I know things that like, I'm like so good at, you know, I'm a really good writer. I mean, I got pulled aside at UCLA, you're right by like the English department and the philosophy department. And they were fighting over me and told me that I was going to be like a worldwide bestselling author because I'm such a good writer. Right. And I'm like, wow. Right. But that doesn't mean that that was what I was supposed to do. That wasn't my mission. Right. It's like, I could see how that could be there, but, and that's a skill I have, but like, I don't have the call to be JK Rowling. Do you know what I mean? Like to do what she's doing. Like I'm using my writing skills in in my own way or like my social media skills. I'm really good at that, but I don't, I'm just, I'm not using them in, in a way that I could. Right. And so my point is like, it's like, I can speak English. That doesn't mean I'm supposed to be an English teacher. I think that this is like the discernment of like, we we can have a lot of different skills, but it's like, is that really my mission, my work, like the thing that brings me purpose in every single day, you know? And the thing is, you're going to know based on how you feel, like, do I feel fulfilled for me personally? You know, there's a lot of things I'm really good at and I can make a lot of money off of that I've leaned into and I'm doing it every day and everybody else loves it. And I end the day and I'm like, I excelled. I got an A plus 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 and everybody loved it, but I still feel like a little disconnected. Right. And so for me, it's like, when do I feel the most connected? Like I'm so high on life. And, and the thing is the way that I channel, for example, a lot of people that might feel like a really disconnected experience for them. Right. And the things I channel and the beings I channel, maybe other people that might not actually even feel resonant. You know what I mean? Like, like there's a reason why, you know, I'll just use the channeling example. It's like some people love working with past loved ones. Like that is just like, that is really lighting them up. And it's like, great, lean into that then. You know, I, I always have a gazillion dead people all around me, but it's not lighting me up. I could very much do that if I wanted to, but it's not lighting me up, you know, and I could look at Long Island Media and be like, I could have a TV show. People love this shit, right? It's like so mainstream, easy, accessible would blow up, but it's not my mission. You know, and it really goes back to what you were saying around, like, we don't need to be somebody else. And what what we're really looking for is like, we're seeing somebody in their joy and we're like, I want that frequency, but how that frequency plays out for you is going to be a different action than, than it is me, you know? And so it's like, it's definitely a hard conversation for me, like around the channeling thing, because I don't want to discourage people from it. Like, I don't want to ever discourage people from like what they feel guided to. I just am like highly suspicious. And I'll be honest, like most people on the planet aren't here to channel the way I channel. So I feel well, they're not here and they're not capable of it. Actually, Yeah. yeah. And I Maybe think that, you can speak more to that than I probably. Well, I mean, when we look just at basic personality, we've talked about Neo, yeah. the Neo a couple of different times. And when we look at just even your personality, it is a, it is unique in the population. And so therefore you would have a unique expression of whatever frequency you're choosing to channel. Yeah. And not everybody, not everybody is going to have that capability simply because it's not wired into their personalities or their blueprints or how their bodies, their nervous systems are wired either. Like I was at the matchbox 20 concert last night. We were talking about this before we started recording. And I said, I think that there were probably 20,000 people in the arena. It was sold out. And I looked around and I had this awareness of everything that was going on, on a spiritual plane. I saw, I could see everything. There was not, I, I posted on Instagram last night, my third eye is clear and I'm still here, Yeah, unfortunately or not. But I, I had this moment of being like in an arena of 20,000 people. And I know that I am the only person in this room who knows exactly, except probably the bad guys who knows exactly what's going on from the spell casting and the 
the codes that were coming through on the backgrounds and the, the light flashing bullshit, like all of that. I know what they were doing, but I was the only one. And it was a very, at once, I didn't feel isolated. I just felt like I'm glad I'm talking to Christina tomorrow because yeah, she'll get it. Yeah. So it is important to have community of people who really truly see and understand you. And if you're feeling drawn into channeling, either channeling other beings, benevolent beings from other realms, or ch- just channeling frequencies like the frequency of wealth consciousness, that frequency is going to drop in differently depending on how the body is functioning, depending on how the nervous system is wired. And then even how wealth consciousness gets channeled through you in flow is going to look different because you're a unique being and you're here for a unique purpose and you are not like everybody else. Totally. Well, I think it gets down to like, what are you really looking for? Like, what's the frequency you're really looking for? What's the support you're really looking for? What's the connection you're really looking for? Cause the thing is, here's the thing. Like if I'm looking for like my highest guidance or clarity, I'm not going to like channeling another being isn't the way <laughs> it's going straight to my higher self, going straight to source. Like there doesn't need to be a middleman. Right. And so th- that, that's why I go back to like, what are you really looking for? Like, and you know, I think part of, for me, this journey has been interesting. Cause like I personally never was like, yeah, I want to be a channel. My ego would do anything else. My ego would do literally. And then I also had, so it took me so long to even just wrap my head around. Like, why does this matter? Like, why, why is it helpful for another entity to come into my body and use it? Like, I actually just don't understand how it's helpful. You know, and I think my resistance around it was big picture, very telling for me about like, this is not a coincidence, you know? And like, there's a reason that's, that's coming in, you know, I think for me, it just goes back to like, but why, why do you want to do it? Like, what, what is it that you're really looking for? You know? And then when people are like, well, I just want to, I want a deeper connection with the divine. I'm like, that's not the most efficient way at all. (laughs) So what do you really want? That's the thing. And here's the thing. If you're looking for fame or influence or followers, and that's the reason, Mm -hmm. if that's what you want, and you think that this is the way that if Christina does it this way, or if whoever name your name, that tune does it that way, then therefore I will do it. It won't, you'll bump up against some things that you won't want to probably experience. Yeah. It will blow up in your face for sure. It'll either not work or it will work too well. And then your entire life will come crumbling down. Right. Like that's like what they talk about manifestation mastery. Like what's the foundational frequency, right? So if it's coming from like an ego driven place, then that's going to be threaded through the entire experience. And that frequency is going to blow everything up, um, at some point or another. And you're not even going to feel good the the whole way through. And like, who, who do you think you, who, and what do you think you're going to be attracting in your life as you walk that path, you know? And I think that's the thing for me. Like I can tell in a second what someone's real intentions are like in a second. Right. And most people are fooling, fooling themselves right, about what their intentions Mm -hmm. are. It's like, we have to be really honest with ourselves, but it's like, it's not that all the spiritual stuff, like it is cool and it is fun, but it's a sacred experience. And if people are not honoring, like this is a sacred experience space. This is a profound, beautiful, like ceremonial, like divine experience and honoring that then they're not really getting it. You know? And I think a lot of people are just kind of leaning into some of these things because it's trendy or it's Mm -hmm. because it's cool. And that's how they kind of open themselves up to lower frequency information or unclear information coming through, through, or even things getting attached, you know? So it's like, I can tell in how someone shows up to it, how they relate to it. And also it's like, what would you do if you were alone on an island? Right. Am I doing it just for show? I think that's the thing that the performative is, yeah, is really difficult when it's like a very performative, like it's for show. It's just like showing off that kind of energy. That is like where the lines get muddied. <laughs> for sure. It is a sacred experience. And in my experience, there are so many dark energies at play right now. I really feel that know that we are in spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. And I think that we're being called online, not to, of course, to have a sacred experience, but also to bring on these ancient gifts Mm -hmm. and abilities that we have literally because of what we are up against energetically on this planet at this time. And that became once again, clear last night at the, at the concert. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. And that's what like, 
you know, I keep trying to, <laughs> I keep saying this and it's like, I know that what people aren't getting it. Right. But I'm like, we are being called up to like, you need to be more spiritually mature. Yes. Like, you need to be more spiritually mature because it's like, this isn't just like screwing around. Like, yeah, have fun talking to the beings. This is like, we have to anchor in this kind of consciousness. Like, because this is like, remember what happened at Atlantis? Like this, is it's, it's not fun and games. It's like, it is, it's spiritual warfare. And I know it that is. sounds really charged, but like people are blind to what's going on and think it's all fun. And it's like, we have to be doing grid work right now. Like we yes. have to be to your point, bringing on these ancient gifts. And it's not just so I can have fun doing it. It's because I have to bring these codes onto the planet to shift things like so that we can make a change and we're not going to be screwed, right? Like we all have to play our part. And that's the thing about when people ask me about like, it's like getting caught up in the fear and putting myself out there. It's like, put your mission over your ego. Like there are so many things I do all day, every day that my ego does not want to do that I'm uncomfortable with that people could judge me for like, whatever, like my mission is more important. I don't have these gifts to just hide in a corner. I have them because they're needed on the planet right now. And that's why I chose to incarnate. So I'm not going to hide, you know? And I think that's the thing. It's like, there's a real immaturity that, that mm -hmm. shows up around, around spirituality connection with the divine. It's like, we don't have space for that. Like it is no. a very, it's my human right now. It just wants to say like, it's like a, I want you to, I want to say, just grow up, grow up. <laughs> yeah. It's, I remember learning how to use the pendulum like yeah. 20 years ago when I was yeah. first wait. And I'm like, okay, this is so far beyond playing with the pendulum. Yeah. It's so far beyond that. And I've known that my whole life I've been in spiritual battles from the time I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Um, in my sister's sorority house at university, like all of these places that they, I just keep up, keep on coming up against these dark yeah. energies and these dark beings. And I see them Yeah, and they are well aware mm -hmm. of us. Mm -hmm. And I think now it's time to even the playing field and bring our people online. One of my clients said one time, Robin, you're forming an army. And I said, yes, I am. Yeah. And I think you are too. And I think that that's the point in part of this conversation is this is meant to be taken seriously. It's not something that is, you know, something cute to do on the side or, you know, because I'm having an existential crisis mm -hmm. and I have to find myself, yeah. just be your, just be yourself, but step up and be fully in it because we need yeah. you. Oh, totally. And, you know, I feel called to share this. It's been really interesting out here in San Diego. I have like you know, there's a lot of spiritual community. There's also a lot of like very mainstream people and I dabble in all of it. And there's a lot of people who will make fun of this kind of thing and think it's like a joke or like, yeah, you're so, it's like not even real, whatever. And I'm not saying that, like, I'm just saying what I have seen um, in the last few months, the number of people who like, like people I know personally, like friends of friends call it like that kind of thing who have actively like made fun of this. And it's like, that's a joke. And there has been a lot of dark entities getting in. And I have had a lot of these people reach out to me and be like, there's, you know, a demon yeah. talking to me in my brain and I can't get it out. And I've tried going to the, like, it's like yeah. entire life falling apart because this entity has gotten in and I'm yeah. seeing that happen a lot. And I'm like, yeah. And I hate that. I'm so sorry that happened. And also like, remember when you're making fun of this and saying it wasn't real until it takes <laughs> over your life. And it's like, yeah, this shit's happening, you know? So, um, and that's really sad for me to, to see. And that's also, you know, when I see people in the spirituality space being like, just be the light and the dark, like it just, it doesn't matter. And I'm like, have you ever worked with someone ever? Like, are, are you completely blind to everything that's going on? You know, it's like, it's so strange to me when people are like shitting on energetic protection and psychic boundaries and discernment. And it's all just this very like bypassy, like just be the light. And I'm like, Oh my God. But, but that's the false light. Yeah. The Bila light is the false light. I'm like, it, but it's just to me. So like not compassionate. I'm like, mm -hmm. you know, I would have believed that until I had people coming in and again and again into my office and seeing how they're, you know, they were just at a concert. They were just, you know, they're out for drinks with a friend and something got in and it completely destroyed their life. Right. And they're coming to me like, I need help. And it's like, we got to clear this. Right. So like, I would never tell that person, oh, just raise your vibe. Oh, just have positive affirmations. Oh, just make sure you're like, you know, being the light and it will have to leave. It's so yeah. uncom like, I don't know what the word is, not compassionate. And I'm like, this is real life. <laughs> you know, it is. So it is. The interesting thing is that, you know, I work with a lot of engineers and physicians, mm -hmm. all of them are intuitive. And even though in their ordinary lives, they would not necessarily 
be aware of the things that they're aware of when they work with me. But when they come in and I'm clearing nanotech from their field, from whatever injection they chose to get, when I'm clearing cords or hooks from their fields and they're having a notable difference, even the physicians, and I say that for obvious reasons, will yeah. say, I don't know what you're doing, but I feel better. Yeah. And they, they're they seeing tangible differences in their lives as a result of this work. Who knew we were going to go down this pathway, but that's where we are. And yeah. it's a serious conversation. And I think that the other big message for me that's coming through, and I'd love to hear your take on this, I think you alluded to it, is the time. We don't have a lot of time left mm-hmm. to come online. Yeah. It's really like, well, and I'll just echo what you just said. It's like, if this shit wasn't real or wasn't working, the highest achievers in the world wouldn't be doing it. Right. I think most people would be extremely surprised at my clientele and who comes into my office. Right. It's like, these are, these are CEOs, these are professional athletes. These are celebrities on screen who act like they're totally mainstream who, and they are coming back because it's helping. Right. And they're like, oh shit, this is real. Yeah. So I think that people don't realize like what the highest achievers, like big names they know are really doing behind the scenes to support themselves. You know, with the time piece, it's like, oh man, I don't even like to like really get into it. Cause I'm like, all I can say is, God, it's going to be messy if you don't pull your shit together and grow up and use your gifts and learn how to do this. Like, it's going to be really messy uh, in not good ways. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know what else to say about it other than like, especially this last month, like when I was doing energy updates and I'm like, I'll give you an example. Like, like I talked about moving. Right. And it's like, if I'm getting the urgent message to move, I need to fucking move because I don't know why. Right. Like that could be something extremely serious. I'm being protected. Like, yes. so when you're getting the intuitive nudge to leave a relationship, to go, to go travel somewhere, um, to start work, changing your career, like, and a lot of us, Oh, I'm scared. It's like, you don't have time to be scared. You got to listen to it because you don't know what's going to happen. Right. In the physical. And that could be not, not great. And so I don't want to wait around and find out what I'm being protected from. I just want to not like, I'm, if I'm getting that, it's because my higher self is seeing down the timeline and saying, move, I'm saving you move. So listen, listen, <laughs> listen and take action. You can be aware yeah. and not be in action. And that I think differentiates, right. To stop the gaslighting of yourself, to stop thinking you're making it up in your head. Mm-hmm. That's why it's so important to be discerning and clear so that you can make these big decisions at this, at the, what would seem to be the spur of the moment, but which are actually in direct alignment with your highest good and purpose. Yeah. We've got to like, when we get that, like you said, take action immediately. Like we don't have as much people used to have more leeway with time of like, Mm -hmm. Oh, I can sit and noodle on this intuitive nudge I've been getting. And it's been six months later and maybe I'll leave. It's like, we don't have that luxury anymore. You got to get to it. And like, you don't want to wait around and find out why. Do you think we lit a fire under their asses? I hope so. I hope so. I hope so. I mean, that's, I tend to do that without trying because I get very, I get very passionate, you know, but I just think, and I hate to, it's just funny because I'm, I never say this kind of shit, but I'm just going to say it here. I just look around at a lot of people and it's hilarious because I know what I look like and what people judge about me, but I'm like, y'all are uncultured. Like you're so naive. Like the things that people say and think like, it's so naive. And I'm like, oh my God, open your eye, open your third eye, like open your senses. There's going to be a rude awakening. You go, people think that they're immune to, or isn't going to happen or whatever. It's like, it's just naive. You know, I think there's a lot of stuff in the spiritual space that I'm like, this is really naive. It's like the love and light thing. I'm like, oh, dark entities don't exist. Like, and I'm like, it's, it's just naive to me. Um, and I think about like, I'm really, really grateful for my work because it has brought me in close contact with thousands of people from all different types of backgrounds, uh, with all different types of life experiences. Like I feel like I'm pulled in every freaking direction, which is really cool. And it's taught me a lot. And I've gotten to learn a lot outside of my own personal experience, right. Just from all these different people. And it's like, people are caught in their own bubble about how they think the world works when everybody's like, it's not what everybody's like. It's what the 20 people, you know, are like, you guys are all the same. You know, and there's so much more going on in, in the world, in the astral, like, uh, like in every dimension, like on your, your soul contracts. And I think it's really important that people are just open to entirely different ways of thinking to entirely different ways of being, of moving, of of doing life, because you don't want to hit that point where you realize how naive you were. 
And that's how I felt when I really opened my gifts. I was like, oh my God, I am so glad I got this early on because I would not want to go through life this completely blind. Becoming the channel. (laughs) Becoming the channel. (laughs) Christina, we could, we should have the Christina and Robin hour. Yeah, we should. Once a week. Yeah. All right. We're going to wrap it for today. We'll put all of your links in the show notes. Mm -hmm. And if you're not connected with Christina, well, you certainly are now. And so (laughs) they're like, who the hell is this? And what just happened? I'm surprised that um, we're still recording. We didn't blow the circuits. I know it was protected, protected hundred percent. All right. Thank you for joining us today. It's been a joy to be here with you and an honor. And I think we're going to see each other next week. So that'll be, we are, we are. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Talk to you everybody later. Well, there you have it. Another episode of Becoming the Channel is in the books. Let me know if you thought this was helpful and inspiring. And if it was, be sure to take a screenshot and share it to social media and then tag me at dr.robinmckay and at Becoming the Channel podcast so I can repost it and say a big thank you for sharing because it really does help support the show and our community. If you loved what you learned today, I'd love it if you'd leave a five-star review on the podcast so that even more people can join us on this journey of ascension. Thanks so much for tuning in and I'll chat with you again soon.